As I look around at the current state of buffet restaurants in America, I can't help but feel a sense of regression. The days of all you can eat buffets filled with endless options seem to be dwindling, replaced by a new era of limited choices and increased costs. It wasn't always like this. I remember the excitement of going to a buffet restaurant as a child, eagerly piling my plate high with all my favorite foods. The array of choices seemed endless from savory poultry to sweet desserts, and I couldn't wait to try them all. But as I grew older and returned to these same restaurants, I began to notice a change. The once expand and or expand selection had been scaled back, replaced by smaller portions and higher prices. The quality of the food seemed to suffer as well, with prepackaged and processed items taking the place of fresh homemade dishes. What happened to the glory days of buffet? Was it the rise of fast casual chains or the growing concern over health and wellness that brought about this regression. Perhaps it was a combination of both. In an effort to cut costs and cater to changing tastes, many buffet restaurants have turned to pre-made frozen foods that can be easily reheated and served. This may save money in the short term, but it comes at the cost of taste and quality. Customers are left with bland, uninspired dishes that lack the flavor and variety of the past. Additionally, the increasing emphasis on healthy eating has led some buffet restaurants to limit their offering in an effort to promote healthier options. While this may be well-intended, it often results in a lack of variety and excitement for customers. After all, who wants to go to a buffet and only have a few options to choose from? But perhaps the biggest factor contributing to the regression of buffet restaurants is the rising cost of food and labor. As prices for ingredients and wages for workers continue to rise, buffet restaurants are forced to raise their prices or cut back on portions in order to remain profitable. This leaves customers feeling shortchanged and dissatisfied with their dining experience. So where does that leave us? Are buffet restaurants doomed to continue their regression or is there hope for a return to their former glory? Only time will tell. But one thing is for sure, as long as there are people who crave variety, in their dining experience, the concept of buffet restaurants will never truly die. I said all of that to basically get in this video right here. Uh, this video is basically gonna be gonna be reviewing how buffet restaurants are scamming you to eat less food exposed. How to beat the buffet. So. Uh, as you know, I believe some buffet restaurants have like this limit like that you can eat. There's like a buffet around my area where you each plate that you eat, like you have to finish the plate. Like on your very last plate, if you don't finish the plate, they're going to charge you for the very last plate because like that's, you know, that's wasted food to them. So let's just get into it. When you walk into a buffet, it looks like a food heaven. Everywhere you are greeted with rows of hot food on display, and you can take as much as you want, off of one just set price. Right. Now, as you're stuffing your face with all this food, you're probably wondering to yourself, how do these buffet owners actually make money? Well, these buffet owners aren't idiots, because if they were, they would no longer be in business. They've right. already calculated how much profit they would likely make off of each customer, so before mm -hmm. you go out thinking you're getting a deal, you need to watch this video. That's because in this video, we're going to show you the eight sneaky ways on how buffets are scamming you to eat the least food as possible. But right. first, give the videos a thumbs up to support us on the YouTube algorithm. We'll be okay. honest with you, the more likes, the more chances YouTube will push our video. So if you want to support us, just click the like button. Share this video with a buffet lover, and we all know at least one of those. I have some of the, um, some of the yellow. And don't get cheap on me. <laughs> 
Number one, strategic layout. Ever notice in a Chinese buffet, all the heavy carbohydrate foods such as noodles and fried rice are in the front? Yes. Same goes for the American buffets. The French fries and mashed potatoes are always placed first. Exactly. This is a strategic layout to maximize the buffet's profit and fill up your stomach quickly. Studies have shown that the heaviest initial consumption at buffets by customers are normally the first plate. By putting so wait a minute, they put all the starchy foods together so you can eat that and get heavy off of like one or two plates. That's pretty smart. I ain't gonna lie. That, that's that's a smart way to make people like get full fast. All the cheaper foods that are heavy in carbs in the front is purposely tempting mm, you to load up first on it. By the time okay. you make it to the more expensive foods all the way in the back, such as the meat and seafoods, okay. you have less room on your plate. Even if you go for the more expensive foods on your second round, you won't be as initially hungry as you were when you first got started. So to ask all the buffet managers, starchy foods simply in target the front. expensive things first and avoid the cheap things in front. Mm. These sides are us, the eaters of the world, and our enemy, the evil buffet master. Do you mean your local restaurant owner? Okay, we've set up a real buffet here in our lab. Let's see what the research assistants are doing. Right off the bat, I'm worried about Angela's technique here. This area is what I call the Buffet Master's booby trap. He's gonna load up this area with cheap filler to try to fill your plate and your stomach okay. before you get to his pound. Oh, okay, Number they're two, doing it. They're probably uh, serving you leftover foods. Food Whoa. wastage is a major concern for both. Time out, what? Leftover food? That makes me scared now. I don't even wanna eat buffet now, wow. That's probably why there's that's probably why there's less and less buffet restaurants each year. Are you serious? Leftover foods? That is nasty as hell. Like you mean like leftover food that like people didn't eat or leftover like leftover cooked food from the the previous day like that didn't get like touched or you know just stayed in the pan or whatever. Either way, it's nasty regardless buffet managers as it will greatly affect their profit margins and while they cannot reserve the food that the customers did not touch on their plate i don't want to and they definitely could pack up the foods that were left untouched in the buffet display and reserve that the following day you will never know how fresh the food is at a buffet and it's been cooked that day or leftovers from previous days i'm terrified that is nasty work in the same shopping center claim oh my goodness into the kitchen but that is nasty bro and tonight's dirty dining investigator jeff no that's nasty as hell for several minutes that is sick in the dumpster removing item after that is sick what acts as a lookout then what? The side of the dumpster and again oh no, that's nasty. Out. Witnesses claim it's food. They tell Local 10 News he took it back to his restaurant right after the state inspector left. Oh, that Number is three, sick. Smaller plates means you will eat less. That is the name of the game when it comes to buffet managers, and it's been mentioned that their main goal is to get the cheaper foods to fill your stomach up first. Things such as larger plates being strategically placed closer to the fried rice and pasta mm -hmm. dishes, but the smaller plates around expensive food such as the seafood and quality cut meats. I was at the buffet the other day and I did notice in how small the plates were. Things were literally falling out as I struggled to eat off the small plates. Mm. Just one of each item. Turn into the station for round two. Maximize high value items, e.g. prawns, over more value bulk foods such as rice. I want to give a shout out to our first ever super thanks that we received. Thank you, Olivia. We really appreciate your support. Your contributions and donations will be used to support our channel and to keep our coffee habit to keep us up to create these videos for you. No I almost kind of want to know, utensils. like... The smaller plate concept also applies for the serving utensils. It could be huge serving spoons like this one you see here on Amazon for the rice, which the buffet wants you to grab a large portion of. But small little tongs like this one, they can barely grab anything of any sort oh, of wow. plate. For the grab one. Suspect, huh? But a lot goes, man, a lot goes into owning a buffet. I didn't, I really didn't know that they really, they really have this strategically down to like how much money they are going to, I guess, cheat people out of and how much food they're gonna cheat people out of and how much money they're gonna make off of people by you know like just by plate just by the size of the plate just by the spoon like man there is so much that goes into this i didn't i had no idea this is how it like this is how deep they go with it like it's crazy but now you know the reason <laughs> you understand what this is dude keep the kids away from number five excuse me but where's the service? Unlike a la carte menus, you won't have a server checking in on you all the time. Matter of fact, uh, no, I take that. No, no, no. I don't. I don't agree with. It. Like, I I have gone to Chinese buffets where there's still a server. Like, they still have to bring you drinks and still have to. Uh, I mean, they don't really have to do anything. Honestly, actually, take that back. They only have to like serve you drinks and then just bring you the bill. But there's still a server there, so I mean. 
it doesn't it doesn't like maybe like an american buffet place doesn't do that but like i know that the chinese buffet places like they still have to have a server to like come like you know bring you drinks and then bring you the bill i think in some case i think in some cases they still have i guess in certain chinese buffets in certain cases they still have to like serve you special things that you can't get on at, like you know that's not already on the buffet that they have you know it's like a special order or whatever or something like that but yeah servers the, the server is still there for the refilling of drinks and you know that's that's how they get tips and then of course bring in the check the servers are most likely busters and you're just there to pick up your old dishes and clean the tables that's who that's because buffet management has already factored in the cost of labor and by cutting costs on the overhead it will mean less servers which means more profit and then servers is really ain't getting paid at all unless it's like a family-owned buffet place oh, here's where i win all my money back <laughs> number six they want you to drink soda one of the few times you will interact with a server at the buffet is when you first arrive and they ask you what you want to drink. Um, can I just have a diet coke? Coke. Okay. And water. Some buffets even make it open to access the fountain soda machine. You should know that buffet is counting on you to order a soda. That is because the soda will help fill up your stomach quickly. In turn, <laughs> you will consume less food. A funny thing is, I never, like just about never, well, I ain't gonna say never, but since I've like grown, like I've grown to like drink soda a little bit less and less and less in my life i don't ever ask for soda i ask for like lemonade or you know something that's not a soft drink didn't know that's one of their tactics restaurants apply another strategy that's hidden in plain sight really mm. big soft drink cups so you can that's fill good. up on soda oh, yeah, also take note on how large the soda cups are and how they have free refills soda costs yeah, close to nothing for the that's true. so they can turn a profit easily next time just stick with water Oh yeah, water too, of course. Remember, the aim here is not simply to have a satisfying meal, the ultimate aim is to beat the buffet. Number seven, buffets have already done their math. According to some buffet chefs, well, the duh. cost normally average to about 30% of the meal. So in other words, if the buffet is charging $30 per person, then the food cost should average about $10 for that person. The $30 per person would have already factored in the food cost, the overhead, and labor, and still turn a profit. This is how buffets make money. Hey, man. Boy, did we do the wrong thing. Shrimp? Crab legs, shrimp, potatoes. You know what? We're still a little bit hungry. Can I just take a couple potatoes? Yeah, help hey, yourself. Look at that. Ta take a crab leg. Are you sure? Absolutely. Take some shrimp. And then here's another thing that you're missing out on is like if you're like, if you don't sit down at a buffet and you're just like getting like a to-go plate or whatever, man, the math on that is even is even more calculated in their favor too. When you when you're doing like to go plates, they like measure it. They like measure how much food you have in a plate. Like they put it on a scale and everything. Like man, all that stuff adds up. Two. Take two shrimp. Here we go. Thank take you. take three. You want three? No, two is plenty. That's yeah. all I want. I'll give you some. Go back. Get me some. I need Hi, some I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, but, um, you can't uh, take from the buffet and share with someone who's ordered off the menu. So unfortunately, we're going to have to charge you for an additional buffet. It says you Number eight. They will ban people. All really? we just mentioned in this video are designed for buffets to turn a profit. But if you're costing them too much money, they will ban you. These people are the super eater types. And those people who go, those people who go to to buffets and eat like six plates of food. Oh my goodness, they be. I know they be giving them that side. I I know the I know the owners of some of these buffets be giving them the side eye like crazy crazy side eye, bro. Like. You came in here and spent, you came in here and ate eight plates of food. I cannot, man, I can only imagine, bro. When buffets had enough, they would ask them to leave. In 2012, Bill Wiss was asked to leave his local buffet when he was found to be eating too much of the fish and leaving none for the other customers according mm. to the buffet. Albert Fleming was kicked out of a buffet in Massachusetts for eating too much in 2017. Dang! Restaurant, a customer got upset because an all-you-can-eat fish fry didn't live up to its name. It's f false advertising. Bill Wissett has a beef with the all-you-can-eat fish fry at Chuck's Place in Thienesville. He was there Friday when the restaurant cut him off after he ate a dozen pieces. Goodness, a dozen pieces? Y'all should be happy. Y'all be. He's giving y'all money. He's freely giving y'all money. Like a dozen, but a dozen pieces of fish is crazy. 
goodness, bro. Like, how hungry were you? I know the owner was like, man, bro, just go home. We don't get, we can't keep cooking. Like, I don't got no more fish to give you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Two, do like, does it? Oh my goodness. More fish, and they refused to give us any more fish. Because he probably didn't have no more fish. fish and the owner probably didn't have no more fish. A problem customer before. They sent him on his way with another eight pieces, but that still wasn't enough. He was so fired up. He oh my goodness. So there you have it. These are the ways blood pressure was probably crazy much that so day. You always make a profit in the end of the day. If you enjoyed this video, give the video a thumbs up and share this with someone who. No, I ain't gonna lie. A dozen, like. A, do a dozen you just greedy bro like my goodness that that's just that's just completely just just greedy like 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 that's greed but anyways man that is the end of this reaction y'all tell me what y'all think and i'm gonna just keep coming back with more reactions and more podcasts and you're gonna see a lot of content from me i'm just gonna keep on going and just stay tuned